Hello, my name is Jennifer Hillary. I am a town meeting member in Precinct 7. Welcome to Virtual Town Meeting 101. Town Meeting 101 is a collaboration between our town moderator, Alan Folds, our town clerk, Laura Jem, and several town meeting members, myself, Tom Grant, Eric Burkhart, and Nick Boivin. We gave this presentation at the Reading Public Library a couple of years ago in hopes that our town meeting members and community members alike would learn more about how town meeting works. We're coming to you today virtually, so we do not have the benefit of a question and answer session. But if you have any questions or feedback about this presentation, please feel free to reach out to any of us. So an overview of this presentation, we will talk about what town meeting is, when it happens, and what happens before, during, and after town meeting. At the end of the presentation, we'll provide some resources to you if you want to learn more and also point you to a video called Voice of the People. So what is town meeting? The Citizen's Guide to Town Meeting describes town meeting as both an event and an entity. As an event, it is a gathering of elected representatives to conduct public business. In 1944, Reading adopted the representative form of town meeting. As such, members are elected from eight precincts, and there are 24 town meeting members per precinct. They serve for overlapping terms of three years, so we have a total of 192 town meeting members. As an entity, Town meeting is the legislative body of our town. It decides both bylaws and budgetary items. In contrast, the executive branch of our community is the select board, school committee, and the library board of trustees. So when does town meeting occur? Each April, we have our annual town meeting. We meet Mondays and Thursdays until our business is complete. Typically in the spring, precinct meetings occur before our annual town meeting. At those meetings, the chair and clerk of the precinct is elected. Any vacancies may be filled until the next election and other precinct business is conducted as needed. Our subsequent town meeting happens in November, again, on Mondays and Thursdays until the business is complete. And precinct meetings may occur at this time, again, to fill any vacancies in that precinct. We have special town meetings as they are needed, and those may be called by voters or the select board. All town meetings take place at the Reading Memorial High School Performing Arts Center, unless otherwise noted. And uh, at this time, we are meeting virtually. I'll turn it over to you, Laura. So when is town meeting in 2021? On um, the town meeting, the annual town meeting includes our town election. So uh, article one of the annual town meeting is our town election. The town election was on April 6th and the annual town meeting starts April 26th. We generally plan for a probable calendar of four nights just in case we don't always continue on the four nights. Um, in this particular case, we'll probably end up with three nights, but we'll see how it goes. Um, a subsequent town meeting is November 8th. So the calendar that you're seeing on the screen is on the town website. You can get to it from the town meeting page or from the elections page. Um, the town meeting link is right off of the town clerk's page. So if you go to department of town clerks and then you can go to town meeting and see this calendar as well. This is kept up for, I try to keep it five years ahead. So you can see the election dates and the town meeting dates up to five years ahead. So what happens before town meeting? Um, a town meeting warrant is created that any uh, town business must be in the town meeting warrant. That town meeting warrant is created through the town manager's office in, in 
working with along with the select board. As I mentioned, Article 1 for the annual town meeting is always the election. The town meeting warrant needs to be posted at least seven days in advance of a, uh, the town meeting, the beginning of the town meeting. So in this case, it was April 6th. It was set, it has to be posted within uh, seven days of April 6th. Um, in the, so that's part of the, so in this case, the town meeting warrant was a little bit early, is a little bit earlier than, for example, the subsequent, because the subsequent starts right on the date of November 8th. So who determines what goes on, what is on the warrant? Um, the warrant can be, an article can be placed on the warrant by two or more of the select board members, uh, by any board or committee, and the warrant article will have on the, um, war, within the warrant article, who is the board that is supporting that article itself. Any 10 voters can also add an uh, article to the annual subsequent or special town meeting. Um, it's recommended that uh, the voters work with the town manager's office and with the select board. Uh, one, the select board may decide to, to go ahead and add that article versus having to add 10 voters. But the other reason is that you wanna make sure that the article is, um, has correct legal language and the town manager's office would work with our town council to make sure that everything is correct and, and meets mass law. And um, any other person or entity that is authorized by the town bylaw or otherwise is can add an article as well. The um, select board approves the, our, the town meeting warrant, um, but any, any of the items listed as far as the, the any board or committee or 10 registered voters can add an article. A citizen's petition for uh, to add an article an item to the article requires 10 signatures of registered voters. Um, the deadlines depend on the calendar that's listed. The calendar that I showed you shows the deadline of when those articles have to be submitted to to be put into to be included in the warrant. Um, it, as I mentioned, it suggested that you work with the town manager's office for his language and you work with the town clerk's office to make sure that those 10 signatures are registered voters. So the report on the warrant is a continuation of the warrant. The warrant contains the articles. The report on the warrant provides the history and the background of the articles on the warrant. Town meeting members are provided the warrant on the re report on the warrant. Um, that is what the, it's generally provided for the town meeting members to be able to pick them up. You receive a letter from the town clerk's office stating the date of the um, town meeting, the probable calendar of the town meeting, and when and where the warrants are available for you to pick up. Uh, they're always posted online as well on the town meeting page right off of the town clerk. So the, the link here, just go to readingma.gov, the town clerk's office, and then town, pay, uh, town meeting and all of the warrants and the re report on the warrant is posted there as well. And I'm gonna hand it over to Tom. Thank you very much, Laura. I'm Tom Grant. I'm a town meeting member in precinct four. So one of the most important things that town meeting does is to approve the annual budget. And in fact, town meeting has authority over all appropriations. In Reading, our budget is approximately $100 million each year. So it's a very important part of what we do. And there is a budget process to follow in terms of reaching that approval that happens during town meeting. Outline of the slide are the different steps in that process. Um, <clears throat> probably the most important is the finance committee reviewing and voting to recommend the budget in March. Most of those meetings are recorded and available uh, on YouTube. So it's always important for town meeting members to have an understanding of what happened at those meetings before the actual town meeting itself. The other point I wanna make on this slide is free cash. Free cash is a very important part of our long-term budgeting process as a town. There's always an accumulation of revenues in excess of our costs. 
and that is always part of our policy with budgeting, usually about 7% of revenue. Laura, can we go to the next slide, please? So in this next section of our presentation, we're gonna to touch on what actually happens during the town meeting. And uh, our moderator, Alan Folds, will take us through some specifics after I cover who's present and a little bit of how the meeting goes. Next slide, please. So in terms of who is present, this is part of the exciting part of town meeting. It's a gathering of the leaders of our town government, including Laura and also our town manager, our town council, and um, also the most important elected boards in town, including the select board and uh, the school committee also is welcome to attend in the audience. Town meeting members, of course, are there. We need a majority of them in order to have a quorum for the meeting to proceed and for the decisions and the vote to take place. And then of course, the public is also welcome. Uh, they do have to sit in a different section of the auditorium, but they are allowed to attend and often speak after the town meeting members have had their chance to speak. Next slide, please. So the way we think about town meeting during the course of the year is that there's the annual town meeting in April, as Laura outlined, and then the subsequent town meeting in November. And usually what happens is that in the April meeting, we talk about the fiscal matters and approve the budget, as I mentioned before. There's a state of the town given by the chair of the select board and the financial report given by the chair of the finance committee. In the subsequent town meeting in November, that's typically when we address bylaws and also we get an update on the schools and RMLD. Now I'd like to hand it over to Alan to talk a little more specifically about what happens at the meeting itself. Thank you, Tom. My name is Alan Foles and I am the town moderator. I, my job is to keep the meeting going, keep the uh, legislative procedures working. It's a one year term. Although town meeting requires strict adherence to legal procedures and rules of order, the real you really is no deep secret involved and no secret language, even though it sometimes seems there is. There are many things that can take place, but most every meeting is comprised of only a handful of procedures, and I'll go through each one of them. First, there's a call to order. That's when the time that posted has been reached and we have a quorum, which in Reading is 97 members. It's, it's uh, half the membership plus one, a majority. Then we usually go through some rituals, the Pledge of Allegiance, invocation, and traditionally, we swear in all our new town meeting members. Then we get to the warrant articles. Usually, town meeting considers the warrant articles in order. However, town meeting may change the order if they feel that it is necessary. The moderator introduces each article, or in some cases, may read it entirely before starting the debate. Then at the end, we have removal of non-participating members, and then we adjourn. But let's go through some of these a little bit more carefully. With the next slide. Getting down to business, motions. Now I, I mentioned warrant articles. A warrant article is the broad um, boundaries of what's going to be discussed. A motion is made under that warrant article telling town meeting exactly what we are discussing. Then the motion is seconded. The moderator traditionally calls on the main proponent to discuss the motion, give a report on it, tell what the reasons are that we want to do this. Then we get reports from rele relevant advisory committees all financial issues the finance committee weighs in on, bylaw changes, the bylaw committee, etc. Then the moderator opens the floor to debate. Okay, a few things can happen. We can dive right into debate on the pros and cons of the article. Somebody may offer an amendment to change what we'll be voting on. Any town meeting member may propose that amendment. Discussion then turns to the amendment itself. When the discussion on the proposed amendment is finished, we take a vote on it. Then we did return to the main motion, either as amended or as it originally stood, the amendment fails. Amendments should be given to the, in writing to the moderator and town clerk in advance of the meeting, realizing that sometimes the subject matter doesn't come up until discussion gets going. Ending debate. There's a few ways to end debate. Uh, one is it just runs out. The more common way is people have just finished talking on the subject. Sometimes though, during the discussion, town meeting may decide it's heard enough. Maybe things are beginning to get repetitive. So someone can make a motion to move the previous question. Sometimes it's simply move the question or simply to end debate. They all mean the same things. Now that's a hefty hill to climb. It requires two thirds vote. It's not debatable, the motion to end debate. 
But we then turn to ending debate, we take the vote, and if two thirds of the body decides it's time, then debate stops and we go directly to voting on the issue itself. By the way, a motion to end debate cannot be made by somebody who's discussing the merits of the issue. It has to be somebody who's risen just for that purpose. Voting. In normal times, when discussion is finished, a vote is called for. First, we try a hand count and the moderator makes the call. If any seven members or the moderator himself questions that hand count, we go straight to a standing count. And by the way, for all votes that need more than a majority vote, a two thirds vote or in, in such, we always take a standing count. The moderator chooses tellers and ask everyone in favor to stand. We count those that are standing. We ask them to sit down and then we ask everyone who is opposed to stand and we count them. Um, and then we declare the vote. Quantum of votes, most votes require just a simple majority. There are some such as uh, most zoning bylaws require two thirds. There are a few other oddballs like paying past bills that require a four fifths, but uh, generally they go through unanimously. The next motion you might hear is adjournment. And there are two types of adjournment. We might adjourn for the evening, meaning it's getting late. We haven't finished our business yet, but it's 11 o'clock and people wanna go home. We will adjourn to the next night. As it was mentioned earlier, we meet on Mondays and Thursdays. So it's a Monday, we'll adjourn to Thursday. Thursday, we adjourn to the next Monday. The other way to adjourn is to sine die, sometimes pronounced sine die, which means without day. That means the meeting is closed. We've reached the end of business. And we, when we make the motion to adjourn sine die, that is the end of the meeting. A few other points I should bring up. Point of order. Someone may have a question on uh, something that was presented or there may be a question on what the moderator has ruled. Somebody can make a, a, ask for a point of order and have that explained to them. Point of personal privilege is something similar, but it's usually not a question. It's usually a point someone wants to make. And it's very often uh, to honor somebody who's retired after many years or a, a member who's been there for 40 years or some significant uh, anniversary. Questioning account. As I said earlier, if seven people question account or the moderator himself questions it, we go to a standing count. The issue of scope, I mentioned this earlier under the uh, difference between articles and motions. The motion must be within the scope of the article and any proposed amendments must be within the scope of the article as well. A, a very broad example I could give you. Say the town wanted to create a, uh, a new DPW garage at 123 Main Street for $80 million with four bays. That might be what the amendment is. When the, when the motion comes into town meeting, it'll be much more refined. It may be a new DPW garage for 75 million with only three bays, a certain size, number of rooms, number of vehicles that can fit, all of the specifics that go along with that. Now those, that would be in order. Somebody could make a motion to raise it back up to the 80 million if they wanted, as long as it's within the scope of the article, or they could reduce it to something less. What it wouldn't be allowed would be to make a motion to add a branch library to the building. It's just that wouldn't be acceptable, it wouldn't be within that scope. Now, of course, that's a very easy call. Most of those scope calls are something a little bit more uh, uh, defined. And sometimes we need to examine whether or not it's within scope. Another motion, indefinite postponement. Indefinite postponement has the exact same effect as a no vote but it's really considered more like a not now vote. It's a way of softly voting no. Maybe we like the idea of a new DPW garage, but the plans aren't ready yet. Or well, maybe we don't have the money yet. So we defeat it by indefinitely postponing. Reconsideration. Reconsideration is a rare, rarely used motion that can bring something up that has already been voted. It has to be moved by someone on the winning side. It may sound counterintuitive, but with the idea of this is second thoughts, not second chances. You can see general bylaws 2.2.4 for the specifics. Next slide, please. Okay, just to reiterate some of these terms. Postponing an article indefinitely means to defeat it. Take no action on an article, which is very rare, but if nobody makes a motion on the article, that has the same effect as defeating it. Yeah, there's another action that's something similar to that, laying the question on the table, but there's a real difference in its outcome. Laying on the table 
it's just to put aside temporarily. We may want to take up something else before we get to that. So we lay it on the table, we put it aside, and it can be brought back up again anytime. We're taking no action on it. Tabling the questions is the same meaning as laying a question on the table. And as I mentioned earlier, moving the previous question is to cut off debate and vote on the issue at hand. Instructional motions. This is something that's almost unique to Reading. Most towns don't have this. These are non-binding resolutions. They're not listed in the warrant per se, although as a general topic they are. It's essentially asking someone to look into something for the next meeting. The author must give it to the moderator and town clerk in writing before the session begins and we try to distribute them to the town meeting members. There's a form available on the town website. Okay, speaking at town meeting. First, you tell who you are. Mr. Smith, precinct two, you don't actually have to give your address, just your precinct. And then you're rising to support this proposal because, or you disagree with this argument we heard because. But you speak technically through the moderator, not to other members, although sometimes I allow questioning of somebody who has the answers, but no attack arguments. We're not attacking people. We're here to discuss issues and not personalities. So we won't say something like the previous speaker was wrong because we don't try to put words into a previous speaker or what their intentions are. We don't know what their intentions are. We have to listen to them themselves. So again, we talk about issues and not people. Town meeting members are limited to 10 minutes unless granted permission for more. Usually that permission is granted to somebody who's making a proposal for building a new school or a new library. It may take more than 10 minutes to explain that. And that's up to the town meeting to allow that. I think that's my last slide. And now I will turn to Laura for, to talk about what happens after town meeting. So after town meeting, um, the, town, the votes taken at town meeting do not take effect until seven days after the town meeting has dissolved. Um, so the, this gives registered voters that wish to suspend a vote and must go within seven days by filing a, re, a referendum petition, um, which is also outlined in our charter. The referendum petition is available on the website and they would work with the town clerk. So the idea behind this is if, a, so, so, say for example, something passes at town meeting and a voter does not agree with that, they can file a petition to have that referendum, which would go to a special election. Um, the effect, uh, so after the seven days, if there's no referendum filed, at that point, everything needs to be submitted to the state. Any bylaw changes, general bylaw, zoning bylaw, or charter changes need to be submitted to the attorney general's office and approved by the attorney general's office before anything goes into effect. Um, anything outside of bylaw changes goes into effect after the seven days following. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we wanted to provide a list of town meeting resources to everyone if you're interested in learning more. Town Meeting Time is the handbook of parliamentary law that's available at the town clerk's office. And there are several websites you can also learn more about town meeting from, including the Citizen's Guide to Town Meeting, the Town of Reading Home Rule Charter, our bylaws, and those are both available on the town website. Uh, as Tom mentioned, RCTV is a great resource for our town's meetings and you can watch past meetings from town meeting on their website and YouTube. You can also reference the Massachusetts general laws. Voice of the People is a wonderful video that our moderator, Alan Folds, was involved in creating. And I encourage you to take time to watch this video. It's approximately 20 minutes and it includes reflections from past town meeting members. And it really makes you feel that town meeting is one of the purest forms of democratic government as you watch this video. This concludes our presentation today, but again, feel free to reach out to us with any questions and we're grateful for your time here today.